Welcome to the celebration of you. I'm your host, Holly Dowling. I'm thrilled to share with you incredible people from all over the world who are living and leading extraordinary lives. From overcoming immense adversity to discovering the secret sauce to leading with courage and grace, their stories are going to bring you hope and inspiration. Now, let the stories begin. Welcome, everybody, to the Celebration View, and absolutely delighted and honored to be interviewing and sharing with you as we celebrate this incredible human being that I had the, let's just say, the joy and privilege of meeting over a few days, and and we're going to go back in time, because I honestly, when I get to introduce you to him, I don't know how long it's been, but what I love, and I got to give him kudos for this. I love it when you get to meet people and everyone that listens to the show. I thank all of you. We are now in close to 160 countries and it's because of you. The show continues to bring stories of hope and inspiration. I want to give him a huge shout out because what so many people miss the boat on in this lifetime is that when you meet people and you make a connection and for whatever reason it is that they make a difference in your life or you create that, that moment in time don't forget about your network. Don't lose touch with the people that make a difference. And so this wonderful man who now I'm going to introduce that I've been raving about you, Linus Ekino, I want to thank you for being on the show because you have shown me what it means to stay in touch with people. You have been amazing at that. And I have loved that out of the clear blue, we reconnected just a few weeks ago. So how are you? <laughs> I'm doing very well, Holly. Thank you for that generous introduction and welcome. Uh, glad to be here with you. Well, I'm thrilled and delighted. And we have to say, Linus, how long ago was it? When did we meet? Was that two years ago or a year and a half ago? I can't remember. So I had to actually look back. It turns out it was probably a year ago, uh, 2018. Okay. All right. Because I was sitting here going, when was that? Because you know when you know somebody and then we've stayed in touch? I feel like I've known you my whole life. <laughs> yeah. February, I believe, it was 2018. So it's probably about a year and a half now, coming up on two. Okay. Well, that's fair. And we did get to meet because... It's something I'm passionate about is getting to work with leaders um, all over the world. And uh, Linus, who just lit up the room, and I'll never forget, I can actually picture where you were sitting. Isn't that funny? Um, <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny how we have that memory? And we just connected and, you know, you're very incredibly brilliant, wonderful at what he does. He's with a, um, you know, a very large uh, leading consulting firm in the world. And yet what I loved about you and why I wanted to have you on the show was your heart for serving and giving back. It's amazing to me what I learned about you and all that you do. So let's just start this show since I'm just talking about you. Maybe you'd like to talk a little bit. And that is, um, tell us about your current world. You're involved in a lot of things. It's not just work in your life. You do a lot of giving back too. So give us a little update on your world, Linus. What does a day look like in Linus's life? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thanks. Uh, well, first of um, every day is a bit different, and and I think that is part of the appeal of, of of my job. And one of the reasons why I do enjoy it is that there are just a plethora of opportunities to do not only different things, but I would also say meaningful and impactful things. Uh, as you had alluded to, um, I do work for a management consulting firm, uh, and so a lot of my day uh, typically is spent helping my clients address. Um, challenges that they're facing, oftentimes a disruption uh, in the form of a crisis mm -hmm. and helping them both recover and respond to those crises in a really sustainable, cost-efficient and compliant manner. Um, outside of sort of my day job, if you could call it that, uh, I also am an adjunct faculty at uh, St. Edward's University uh, where I teach corporate social responsibility. Uh, I also serve on the board of trustees with with them and then also at a board um, of a uh, credit union. Uh, and so really interesting opportunities to sort of take more of a supervisory oversight role as opposed to the work that I do on a day-to-day -day assisting management on a more operational and, 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 and strategic level. Um, and then the other the other stuff is just really giving back. Uh, it, it's it's a core component of, of who I am, of how I was raised and, and continues to be an engine that drives me. 
on a day-to-day basis. And so I do spend a number of my time just connecting with different individuals that I meet. Sometimes they are students or even former students. Uh, other times they are people within my firm and my organization where I work. Um, we built um, uh, just an impressive informal mentoring network that just really allows me to just do what I enjoy best. It, it, it gives me strength to be able to help people identify and activate their purpose. And so just having that chance to, to, to do those things on a day-to-day basis is just tremendous. It's, this is exactly why I wanted to celebrate you. Because for anybody listening right now, Linus, it is amazing to me all that you have chosen and continue to choose how you spend your time. And to think that by day, you know, just when you said clients that are in crisis, right, and disruptive, Uh, situations. Just hearing your voice, you would be the most calm, soothing person to help me through a crisis. I mean, you must have been raised (laughs) in a beautiful way because I'm like to think about what you do for a living and you still show up with this just calm peace. So without going into details and and I don't even, you know, this show has no script. You never know where we're going to go. I would love to know just give us an idea. How have you created uh, boundaries for yourself? How do you manage through helping others through crisis um, and still maintain your own balance and, shall we say, sanity? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think a lot of it comes down to purpose. And I think if, if you are able to, and fortunate enough, I would say, to discover your own purpose, then everything else seems to be able to fall into place. And it's, it's almost like life and you in life comes into harmony. I know a lot of times, especially in the corporate world, people talk about work-life balance. And and for a while, I I shifted and made it work-life choices, uh, at least the way I phrased it. But then it it dawned on me that it's really not work-life choices. It's just life. Work is part of my life, much like my personal relationships are a part of my life. And so choosing to, to operate out of a basis of purpose and saying, Everything that I do, or at least I aspire to do everything in a way that's aligned to my purpose, allows me to equally get the best of whether it's my personal relationships or working with clients or teaching and, and, and helping mentor and coach others. Uh, it, it becomes an easier process. It becomes not a clear distinction of, oh, let me put on my work hat and now let me put it off and put mm-hmm. on my personal hat. It all sort of seamlessly jives and, and, and resonates together in harmony. Mm. Well, and just to hear you use that language, because, you know, I'm a big fan of not the words work-life balance, it's boundaries, right? And I love that Mm -hmm. you said choices. It's, It's not looking at it as one or the other. And it's fascinating as I'm listening to you, you know, you really... I want you to know, and I'm publicly wanted to say this, is that you gave me such a beautiful gift, Linus, when you took the time to let me know the impact that our time um, during that session for a day and a half, the impact that it made on you. And so without getting into too much of the details, you know, in the last year and a half, how has that time, because you, you continue every time we talk to just kind of mention, what has that done for you? What has been the most monumental for you since we were we met a year and a half ago? Yeah, just to maybe provide some context. I mean, when, when we met um, at this development program, I was really in a tough position where I was considering uh, some of the choices that I was making professionally and balancing that um, out of a difficult time in my life. I had recently uh, lost my dad. It was probably six months um, thereafter. Uh, and, and so it's it's one of those really gut-wrenching situations that challenges your perception of life and ask you the questions, am I doing the things that I should be doing or is there a better way that I should be spending my time limited as it be uh, on this earth? And um, it was such a refreshing um, decision on my part to, to, to meet with you and just what, what I would say is I, not that I needed the permission, but I felt like you gave me permission to be myself, to be vulnerable, to really put it out there, what I was feeling and what I was desiring, uh, and, and just ask myself if I was living in purpose. And I know that those weren't the words that you used, but it all fit in mm-hmm. that sort of framework. Uh, and and uh, being able to do that and being able to say, I can and I should make deliberate, intentional choices as to how I spend my time, as to what I work on, with whom I work, 
uh, and how much time and resources I devoted to it uh, was, was such a really welcoming thing that I needed in such a difficult time uh, in my life. Uh, and then choosing to to just stay connected, as you had mentioned earlier. But I think above all else is just operating out of gratitude. You gave me a, a gift that I'd always had. In a way, you reminded me of the gift of you were meant for so much more. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you've always been here. But you've somehow allowed the, the white noise, the cloud, the, the big bright picture You've allowed the one speck on the sheet of paper to make it seem like the rest of the paper wasn't usable. Uh, and, and you somehow were able to just so easily bring that out of me. Uh, and for that, I've always remained grateful and will continue to. And so um, it's, it's been a pleasure to have had the chance to have encountered you. It continues to be a really rewarding um, as we've continued to stay in touch and, and keep on progressing uh, with life and with other aspects. Well, you know, I just want you to know... I am sitting here with my eyes closed and I'm getting a little emotional because I feel like it's, you're celebrating me and the show's all about you. And I'm like, thank you, my friend. Thank you for that. And that just is such a testimony to who you are in this world, though. You, you give yourself your fully present, Linus. And I want people to hear this. A really successful business man as you are. You continue to find ways to give of yourself and serve, and yet you're fully present to the moment. And sometimes we don't even realize how we show up to others. And so in this moment, I want you to know, like, I'll never forget you in that room because you were just so fully present. And I think for any human being, right, it doesn't matter our age, our gender, our race, our language, our level of education. It's the gift that we can continue to give others is just to feel appreciated for who you are and be present. And it's fascinating because I want to go in the few times we've caught up over the last year and a half. I want to go back because I don't even know the answer to what I'm going to ask you, but I want to go back to your younger years because the Linus I know, I'm fascinated to go back to the younger boy. Maybe it was very young. Maybe it was more in higher education, but was there a pivotal moment in your life, Linus, that you can look back on and go, wow, that really made me who I am today? And it might have been a tough road. It might have been adversity or it might have been something really remarkable. I'm, I'm fascinated to take you back to your younger years. Um, <laughs> now I've got memories running through my head because I was a very mischievous young young person. I, I probably still am. I've just maybe found ways to, to suppress the more egregious uh, aspect of it. But but this is interesting because um, it, it, it was funny because last night actually meeting up with a friend over dinner, I actually got to talk about this uh, a little bit. So one one of the really formative experiences that I have is 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 a is an experience that was for a long time sort of somewhat suppressed, but was so critical to me and, 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 and I didn't know it, but the moment it came to surface, you know, it was like, oh wow, this has been there this whole time. Uh, and it, it was me, I was barely four years old. Uh, I'd come back from, from school with, with my younger brother and um, my, my sisters and, um, you know, we were in the process of just relaxing and just getting about to, eating and playing and um, my mom gets us to get back into the vehicle and, and we were going to the hospital. Uh, my grandfather at the time, my mom's dad, um, Ben, um, had um, had been ill for a while and we didn't know it at the time, but this was going to be the last time that we were going to see him. Um, but I recall vividly as a three and a half, almost four year old, he, he got each of us to, to get up on the bed with him and, and he spoke to us. I don't remember exactly what he he said or the exact words that he used, but, but I know that he, he spoke to us, each of us individually and then prayed for us. Mm. Um, and, and, and that faith has, has, has been a legacy that's continued with my mom and with myself and, and with my siblings that it becomes a core part of who we are. Mm. But it's, it's a lesson that it wasn't until I got a chance to speak maybe probably about three years ago to a group of colleagues on purpose that this all sort of came to the surface, um, of, he, he established a legacy, and I often use the analogy of a castle, of it's, it's this, this impressive structure that is both practical, but also at the same time stands the test of time. 
Uh, it's not like a monument that's built to an individual. It's, it's something you don't sometimes ever know the names of the individuals who built those castles, but they, they're still there. And we draw such great lessons from them. And in a number of ways, it's, it's a memory I had of my grandfather that, you know, I didn't remember or didn't really fully activate till maybe probably three, four years ago. But it was something that's always been there and it's always guided me, which is faith and which is also about having a legacy, one that is purposeful and beneficial to individuals around you. Uh, and so that's been something that's really helped form the way that I approach, whether it's work or my personal relationships, which is I want to be as beneficial. I want to be as practically um, advantageous to people. Uh, and I want to leave behind a legacy. I don't care that you remember my name. I care that for however brief a time you had to be with me, or around me, work for me, or me work for you in the case of my client, that you felt that you have become a better person as a result. Oh, Linus, I'm telling you, every time we talk, I always say wisdom and golden nuggets just continue to fall out of you. It is and now I, I, now I know why, because you know, I'm, I have a very strong faith. I'm very spiritual and without ever saying a word, that is the glow that you have. That is the essence of what you bring to this world. It's what probably keeps you being so incredibly, uh, sane and, and, and having a peace about you in the midst of helping clients through crisis, but hearing that and the castle analogy. Okay. When are you going to write a book? Let's talk about that right now. <laughs> oh, well, when are you going to give me an advance? I, I can get started on it. <laughs> well, um, there might be somebody listening that will be that person, right? <laughs> well, I, I hope that I have something worth sharing in a book that, uh, that, that, that would be of benefit to others. So um, I will not say no to the idea of writing a book, but um, I, I'm just really careful to make sure that I have something worth saying. Well, I think I've already got the title. It's coming to me right now. My eyes are closed and I'm just smiling. And it's just, it's, it's Linus's, it's your words of wisdom. It's, it's clear, it's little nuggets. It's <laughs> truly like the castle analogy. And I know every time we chat, I'm always like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Like it just comes out. And I feel like it's a gift to the world, Linus. You are, you are a gift and how and what you bring and how you truly exemplify. You know that word. And I was just speaking for a client last week um, in a big event in Indianapolis. And this client, they really have done a lot around servant leadership. And I love that. And I, I am listening to you thinking you are the epitome of an extraordinary servant leader. And I don't know if you know that, but that's the gift you bring to the world. So thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Um, that's that's very kind. Um, you know, one one of the things that that I think is important for for, for listeners to to, to recognize, uh, and, and and this is nothing that is by itself easy, because there are times that I I do struggle with it, and, and my aspiration is to to serve and, and and to help others, and it comes with 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 a deal of responsibility on your part that. Some of us are fortunate enough, whether it's to be um, educated, to have a good job, to be in positions of authority or if, of influence. And, and while those are creative to us as individuals, I think that, that comes with that um, a, a certain es level of responsibility that, that I think we have to really expend. And, and there are days in which it might seem unfair that you care more than other people care or that um, you want to help people, but the system might be not structured to, to do that. And you might have to take on an unfair amount of burden on yourself that might not be recognized, mm -hmm. uh, not in the near future or if ever at all, but recognizing that as a collective, whether as an organization or as a community or country um, or, or as a human race, we all benefit from each and every single one of us being at our fullest potential. When we look at some of the challenges that we have in the world today, um, if we're honest with ourselves, we need to recognize that whether it's poverty or, or addiction, these aren't problems. These are really results. The real problem is that we may have not in some small way given our best mm -hmm. to ourselves and to others around. Um, and in doing so, we've deprived all of us of the ability to 
share equally in the burden and be the best versions of ourselves that truly enriches. I mean, that's the essence of true diversity is when each and every one of us operating in purpose brings to the fore that special gift, that special talent, that special thing that makes us us, uniquely us. Uh, in, in that collective, you know, I think in, as in the scriptures, you know, it's one body, but different parts and some might seem more glamorous than others, but each are just as important. You know, I might think my elbow is not important, but mm. I can't put food in my mouth <laughs> unless my arms are able to bend, you know, and, and even some of the less attractive body parts, if they choose not to let things pass through them, you know, we're going to have a really, really tough time of our day. So it's, it's just that recognition that sometimes it might seem like you are carrying an unfair amount of burden, but it's absolutely worth it if we can help everybody achieve their fullest potential. Because in the long run, it's less burden for me to carry. What's the point of me being the only rich guy in town? Well, everyone's going to look to me to help them out. But if I can deprive myself of a little bit and invest in other people, and am I, am I less rich as a result? Yeah, but we're all better rich. And there's less worry and less concern and less uh, obligation to, to, to help others out because everybody's helping everybody. Okay, so I have one more thing to say. Are you seriously ready to take the pulpit too? Because I'm ready to come and listen to you all day long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm, I'm going to end this because my mother might be listening and, and she might want me to, to go into full-time ministry. I know. And she'll be calling me going, amen. Thank you for doing this show. I finally got him to go where I want him to go. I, it's truly, truly, you are such a breath of fresh air. You are, again, I'm just going to keep saying it, a true testimony to what servant leaderhood servant leader is all about but you linus are you just bring it this isn't lip service and i want everybody listening to know because the people that listen to this show know i'm very picky on who i i invite to be on this show and it's specifically because of how you've shown up and how i've gotten to know you over the last year and a half all of who you are and what you give to this world so i would love as we wrap this up to, um, it's one of the things I love to ask my guests and I'm going to let you go back to, you know, whatever age you want, maybe your 20 year old self, maybe your 25 year old self. I would love to know when you look back on that younger version of you talk about being the best version of you, what advice would you give to that younger man, the younger version of you based on who you are today and the journey and experiences you've had? If you could give your younger version advice, what would that be? Mm. I probably would say, don't be afraid to let go of who you are to become who you should be. Um, I think there were times I was hesitant because I felt I was, for whatever reason, inadequate, not as trained, not as qualified as the people in there in the room. Um, you know, at different times, you know, you, you, making it to a new country. I grew up, I was born and raised in Nigeria, come, moving to the States at the age of 16 or going to um, graduate school. And you, you, you hear everybody else introduce themselves and they've come from these really impressive pedigree. And you want to, you know, imposter syndrome wants to set in. But, but it's, it's like you are qualified because you are in the room. The very fact that you're in the room means that you're qualified. The fact that you're having this opportunity means that somebody sees something in you that tells them that you're very capable of this endeavor. And so I think there were times early on and at different times, probably even still today, in which I, I, I'm a little hesitant um, about taking on some, some bold steps because I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid that I'm not sure. Uh, I'm afraid that, um, you know, it, it may not work out and I might have some egg on my face, but I have courage to step in that direction and do it. It's turned out just right. Well, it has. And your life is a walking example of it. And Linus, I know um, for anybody listening, if they want to reach out to you, can they reach out to you on LinkedIn? Would you be all right with that if they'd like to learn more about you or just let you know how much they love the interview? Is that okay with you? Absolutely. Uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a terrific place uh, to connect with me. Um, Linus Otano, AKA N O H. Love to, to, to chat, to connect, uh, always looking for a chance to, to learn and grow. So, um, I can learn as much from you as you guys can learn from me. And I hope that this has been worthy. Oh, 
You are a gift, my friend. And I know that people, they will be smiling. And I hope your mother reaches out to me after she listens to this. <laughs> and you can tell her I said that. <laughs> Oh, now nah, you've done it. I know. I can't <laughs> wait to meet her. Now I'm going to be anxiously awaiting this. Um, thank you. Thank you for the gift of your friendship. Thank you for just being the wonderful person you are in this world. And I look forward to a lifetime friendship with you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Holly. Thank you for believing. And thank you for just always encouraging. Mm. Thank you for joining me for another awesome celebration of you. If you were inspired by this story, please share it with your family and friends and hashtag your story matters. I'd love to hear from you. So please leave a comment on iTunes and absolutely please come to my website, hollydowling.com. Leave a comment there too. And while you're there, pick up your free gift. Most importantly though, just remember that your life is a gift from God. What you do with it is your gift back. Thank you.